was rising through the ranks and fighting bigger and better opponents. I fought Butterbean, then I fought Can't Believe It's Not Butterbean. I could barely tell the difference. I fought Sugar Ray Leonard Nimoy, who put a Vulcan nerve pinch on me. The fight was deemed highly illogical. I defeated Lennox Lewis in the news, Evander Sallyfield, and Roberto Duran Duran. I was supposed to fight George Foreman, but I only got George three men and a baby. There's a lot more puns, but this episode's only got a few minutes left. So finally, I got my shot at the title against a world champion, Marvelous Marvin, Mrs. Maisel. Lois, no one's ever gone the distance with Marvelous Marvin, Mrs. Maisel before. But if I can just get in that ring yesterday... Tomorrow. ...and hear that bell ring still standing, I'll know I'm not just a bum from the streets. I believe in you, Peter. Now go drink your eggs. Oh, our dinnerware, Hutch! Sorry. Sorry! Oh, dear man. I was outmatched. A no-name punk fighting a world champion. I fought my heart out. I dug deep and had a kick-ass song on my side. But we couldn't afford the song from the movie, so we used the sound effects from Nintendo Punch-Out. Body blow! Body blow! Body blow! Uppercut! Uppercut! Body blow! The swollen eyes weren't from the fight. There was a cat in the arena, and I was highly allergic. But I'd done it. The only fighter ever to go the distance with the champ. But in that moment, there was only one thing I could think about. She had nailed me. I was, in fact, free last week. I was the pride of Philadelphia. Eventually, I became the champ. I also changed my inspirational music to keep me motivated. Tragically, I died in training. I fell into a vat of Philadelphia cream cheese and suffocated. I guess it was a little taste of heaven. Let's just say at my funeral, there was quite a spread. Some of this story ain't holding up for me. I was cremated. I don't think any of this is true. My ashes were